हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कथा इन दिस सेगमेंट वील डिस्कस अबाउट अनादर इम्पॉर्टेंट टेक्निक फ्रॉम डिजिटल सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग विच इज नोन एज फास्ट फोर ईयर ट्रांसफॉर्म अलगोरिदम और इन शॉर्ट वी कैन कॉलिड एज एफ एफ टी अलगोरिदम्स नाउ इन दिस सेगमेंट वील सी वॉट इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ एफ एफ टी एंड वॉट आर इट्स एप्लीकेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ फास्ट फोर ईयर ट्रांसफॉर्म now friends in previous lectures we have discussed about how to find discrete fourier transform of the given sequence by using formulas there is nothing but direct computation so as far as a discrete fourier transform is considered that to be of let us consider the sequence is x of n now if you want to find dft of this sequence x of n we we'll use this formula x of k is equal to summation 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e raised to minus j 2 pi k n by n this is the standard formula to find dft now in this formula we can get uh, these terms for k starting with 0 1 up to n minus 1 so the iterations are going to be from n 0 to n minus 1 as well as k from 0 to n minus 1 now the major disadvantage of dft is it involves complex additions and multiplications while calculating it directly that means we can say that the necessity of fast fourier transform arises from the fact that direct computation of dft involves number of additions and complex multiplications now let us see this So instead of this exponential term, we'll try to write this in terms of a factor that is called as Tweedle factor. I am simply denoting this w to the base n is equals to e raised to by the j to pi pi capital n. This is known as Tweedle factor. Now, if I replace this value, we'll get x k is equals to summation zero to n minus one x of n into omega to the base n. This entire value is going to be Omega to the base n, and only two variables are there. They are going to be k n. Let this is our first equation, and let us assume this is our second equation. Now, in order to find x of k over the limit zero to n minus one, we need several multiplications. And again, there may be possibility that x of n can be a complex number, or Tweedle factor is obviously complex in nature. So, based on that, we can write the same term. That expansion we can write. This is zero to n minus one. X of n I am writing real part of x of n plus j into imaginary part of x of n into Tweedle factor. Real part of Tweedle factor plus imaginary part of Tweedle factor. Now, if you multiply these terms over the limit zero to n minus one. Let us assume that we are finding only simple or single value of x of k. Now, for single value of x of k, we require the multiplication real with real. That I am writing real part x n, real part omega n raised to k n. This will be our first product of plus real part of x of n with imaginary part of this. That can be real x n into j imaginary total factor. Plus imaginary with this will be j into imaginary x n into real twiddle plus j into j that we can write minus also minus imaginary x of n into imaginary twiddle factor. This is for single value of x of k. Now, if you observe this equation carefully. We can say that to find a single value of x of k, we need four multiplications: one, two, three, four. So number of multiplications required are going to be four, whereas number of additions we can see one, two, three. That means to find a single value of x of k, we need four multiplications and three additions. So we can write number of multiplications required are going to be four for a single value. And number of complex additions required will be three, and that should be 
if I consider that the samples are going to be 4 in that case 4 multiplications and 3 additions are required now if I consider the same for n number of terms so shall we write here the number of multiplications required will be n square and here the term is going to be n into n minus 1 see finding entire value of x of k 4 into 4 into 4 into 4, into 4 because we are having number of samples as 4 so for first value we need 4 multiplication second value 4 third value 4 and for fourth value also 4 that means it is going to be 16 so 4 square will be 16 hence to find entire values we need n square multiplications whereas number of complex additions you can see for every iteration we need 3 additions so additions will be 3 3 3 3 that will be 12 so if it is 12 for n is equals to 4 so if I consider number of samples as n it can be written as n into n minus 1 even if you put those values 4 into 3 sorry 4 into this will be 4 and 4 minus 1 4 minus 1 will be 3 into 4 will be 12 that means in general we need n square multiplication and n into n minus 1 number of addition terms and if I take another values that means if the length is goes on increasing again the complexity is going to be increased and this can be overcome by approaching to the technique called as fast Fourier transform algorithm now how it reduces the number of computation that we'll see so basically in direct computation we are not using any properties of Tudor factor but in case of FFT we are going to utilize two properties of FFT or Tudor factor the very first property is called as symmetry property and the second property is called as periodicity property so I'm writing this part now first we'll see symmetry property of total factor so you can write omega n to the base or the power k plus n by 2 will always equals to minus omega n raised to k this shows symmetry about half the samples that values are going to be same with a minus sign and second one is known as periodicity property which you can write omega n to the base k plus n should be equals to omega n raised to k that means if I add number of samples to the given sequence it will have the same value so it shows repetition over number of samples and this shows symmetry about half this number of samples now let us try to prove this property so first this term we will write omega n raised to k plus n by 2 is equal to now we have seen omega n is nothing but e to the power minus j 2 pi by n into this part k plus n by 2 so if you multiply this term we will write this is nothing but e to the power minus j 2 pi k by n into this is going to be e raised to minus j 2 pi n into n by 2 so n n will get cancelled 2 2 will get cancelled now here the term is e raised to minus j pi and e raised to minus j pi will be cos pi minus j sin pi sin pi will be 0 and cos pi will be minus 1 that means this entire term is minus and this is multiplied with this so we can write this is minus 1 into e raised to minus j 2 pi k by capital n now coming to the part of this term e raised to minus j 2 pi by n it simply indicates total factor and therefore we can write omega n is equal to this minus omega n raised to k so we can use this symmetry property second is periodicity property it shows that it is going to be repetitive in nature so again we will write omega to the base n as e to the power minus j 2 pi by n into k plus n this is there now again we will simplify this term by bracket multiplication so first term k upon n into e raised to minus j 2 pi by n into n and n will get cancelled now in this case we are left with e to the power minus j 2 pi this will be cos 2 pi minus j sin 2 pi and cos 2 pi value is always plus 1 so this becomes e raised to minus j 2 pi k by n that is nothing but again this term is a total factor so this is omega n raised to k that means by using these two properties one can reduce the number of complex multiplications and as far as FFT is considered here 
the number of complex multiplications are going to be reduced from n square to n by 2 log to the base 2 n this much number of multiplications can be reduced now how actually it is possible so this is possible by using a technique called as divide and conquer approach that is decimation decimation is nothing but is to divide so in FFT the given sequence will be divided into smaller segments then individual segments for your transform can be find and then they are be added so this is called as divide and conquer method so by that method and by using these two properties it can be symmetry property or periodicity property we can reduce number of complex additions and multiplication now as far as FFT is considered so we are going to see two basic techniques the very first one method is called as decimation in time decimation in time FFT algorithm or which we can call DIT FFT algorithm and the second one is called as decimation in frequency FFT algorithm that is DIF FFT algorithm now see the name itself indicate decimation that is divide so in case case in first case divide it in time or in second divide with respect to frequency so in case of decimation in time always the given sequence is divided in even and odd parts now why we need even and odd parts so let us consider I'm having one sequence xn as 1 2 3 and 4 now we are having four samples the locations are 0 1 2 and 3 see the locations are 0 1 2 and 3 now as far as the sequence is considered 0 and 2 are even whereas 1 and 3 are odd that means we can divide this in terms of even components and odd component so here the input sequence is divided into even and odd parts this is the basic term coming to the part of next one decimation in frequency now we know that frequency cannot be even and odd so how will you accomplish this so if I consider the same sequence 1 2 3 4 now here though the sample values are same and locations are same but now we are dividing in frequency so we will divide this in two parts first part is called as n by 2 samples and last n by 2 samples so in case of decimation in frequency the given sequence is divided into first n by 2 samples and last n by 2 sample that shows the frequency so by using these two techniques we are going to see in next videos how to find DFT for 4 point using DIT as well as 8 point DIT similarly in next videos we will see how to find F, uh, DFT using DIF FFT algorithm for n is equals to 4 and n is equals to 8 now the part that we are going we have discussed that is necessity the questions are going to be arranged like this one defined first Fourier transform and explain its necessity that going to be the first question second question is uh, discuss about efficiency of first Fourier transform algorithm so in that case you can read the necessity arises from the fact and then you can go for determining number of multiplications required and by using the symmetry property how we are reduced uh, that number of multiplications from n square to n by 2 log to the base to n thank you